Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, sagas in minutes. The series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today, we'll be going on an adventure into the great unknown of the heavens in order to defeat a god as we break down the Sky Island Saga. Sky Island is the third saga in the series consisting of a mere two arcs, told over 85 chapters and 52 episodes. It picks up immediately after the events of Alabaster, which saw the Straw Hats leave their friend Nefertari Vivi behind. However, in a bit of a twist, Miss All Sunday, real name Nico Robin, appears aboard the Straw Hat ship having stowed away, and makes an outrageous demand to Luffy that she join the crew. Robin's reasoning for this is that she was saved against her wishes on Alabaster, and so her newfound life is now Luffy's responsibility. And even more surprisingly, Luffy immediately accepts his demand. As it turns out, Robin has a dream as well to find the Rio Poneglyph and discover the true history of the world. And despite being a former antagonist, Robin gradually wins over the Straw Hats one by one and settles into the role of crew archeologist. Very handy because at this point, a gigantic ship falls from the sky and Robin explains that their log pose has now been captured by the magnetic field of a sky island. Of course, the idea of such a location excites Luffy to no end, and so their next adventure is set. The only problem is how to get up there. This leads Luffy and the Straw Hats to land on the island of Jaya, where they meet a man by the name of Montblanc Cricket, an ancestor of Montblanc Noland, a famous figure of North Blue known in the modern day as Lyon Noland. Cricket had been living on Jaya for years now, searching for the city of gold that his ancestor claimed existed. And as it so happens, Noland also spoke of Sky Islands. So Cricket informed them of the only way he knew how to reach one, which is by riding the extraordinarily dangerous burst of water known as the Knockup Stream. Meanwhile, on Greater Jaya, we have a couple of other factions at play. The first of which is the Bellamy Pirates, led by Bellamy the Hyena, a man with a bounty of 55 million berries. However, after beating up Cricket and stealing his gold, Luffy confronts him directly and defeats the cynical hyena with but a single punch. At the same time, a mysterious man who enjoys cherry pies makes his presence known on Jaya, and after learning of Luffy's bounty, decides to pursue the Straw Hats. Luckily, the Straw Hats manage to escape this man and his crew by riding the knock up stream and embarking on their adventure into the sky. It is then revealed that their pursuers were the Blackbeard Pirates, who quite notably were the crew who sacked Chopper's home of Drum Island, as well as being the group sought after by Luffy's brother, Ace. And should the Straw Hats have been caught by them, it would have almost certainly ended in their complete defeat, if not demise. Elsewhere in the world, Luffy's defeat of Sir Crocodile on Alabaster has caused some incredibly big waves, as a meeting is convened at the Holy Land of Marijuana in order to decide who will replace Crocodile as one of the seven warlords of the sea. This meeting was called by the Gorosei, also known as the Five Elder Stars, who are the ruling faction of the world government. However, heading up this meeting is the Fleet Admiral of the Marines, Sengoku, and three other warlords of the sea are present, including the world's greatest swordsman, Draco Mihawk, as well as two new figures in Bartholomew Kuma and Don Quixote do Flamingo, both of whom are presented as wildly powerful figures with bounties of 296 6 million and 340 million respectively. The meeting is intruded upon, however, by an enigmatic figure who is identified as Lafitte, a banished sheriff from West Blue known for his brutality who has come to suggest a candidate for the warlord position. Elsewhere in the Grand Line, we are also introduced to the strongest man in the world, Edward Newgate, who captains the Whitebeard Pirates and refuses a letter from a member of the Red Hair Pirates, claiming that if Shanks wants to talk to him, then he needs to do so in person. And as such, Shanks makes the decision to set sail and meet Whitebeard. But that is a story for not now. Catching up with the Straw Hats, and they have safely made it up to the White White Sea. And after a brief encounter with the Sky Knight named Garnfall, they find their way to Angel Island, meeting the lovely father daughter duo of Pagaya and Konus, who demonstrate and explain some Sky technology to them. Using one of their funky devices known as a waiver, Nami sets out alone to explore the Sky Realm, finding the island of Upper Yard and witnessing the power of the chief antagonist of the saga, God Enel. Enel is a citizen of another Sky Island who had eaten a devil fruit known as the Goro Goro no Mi, a Logia type fruit that allows him to conjure, manipulate, and become electricity. Furthermore, he also possesses an ability known as Mantra, which allows him to sense the presence of other beings, giving him overwhelming power and omniscience, which for all intents and purposes, does allow him to label himself as a god. The Straw Hats are eventually split up, with Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp facing off against and defeating one of Enel's priests, Satori, who, uh, he, well, he really likes balls. Meanwhile, the other Straw Hats come to the startling conclusion that Upper Yard was actually a part of Jaya Island, which was shot up into the air via the knock-up stream and may be where Lion Nolan's legendary city of gold resides. And so, after reuniting, the crew hatch a plan to find it. But end up embroiled in a death game concocted by Enel, along with the native people of Upper Yard, the Shandians, led by Wiper, who are fighting Enel's forces to reclaim their homeland. During this game, two more of Enel's priests are beaten, one by the hands of Tony Tony Chopper, and the other by the Swords of Zoro. Furthermore, the leader of Enel's militia is convincingly beaten by our newest straw hat, Nico Robin. 
As the game comes to its climax, only six individuals remain conscious. The former god of Skypea, Garn Fall, the leader of the Shandian tribe, Wiper, Rora Nora Zoro, Nika Robin, Nami, and Enel himself. Oh, and it should also be stated that Luffy was still up and running. However, he wasn't included in this number as he was stuck inside a giant snake at the time. Despite being outnumbered, Enel swiftly disposed of everyone else with his Devil Fruit abilities, save for Nami, who he invited to come with him. Although eventually Luffy catches up with them and confronts Enel on the Ark Maxim, a device intended to facilitate the destruction of the entirety of Skypea. However, due to the whole being rubber thing, Enel's lightning strikes have no effect on Luffy whatsoever, which causes Enel to make this face. Despite that, Enel manages to trap Luffy's arm in a bowl of gold and send him flying off the Ark. However, this is far from the end and Luffy struggles to make his way back to Enel, climbing up Giant Jack with a golden hand and everything. But right before the final showdown, it is time for a flashback, focusing on a figure that we've heard a lot about at this point, Mont Blanc Norland. 400 years ago, Norland was an explorer who made frequent trips into the Grand Line, and one day he and his crew were caught in a storm, but they were saved by the sound of a bell, following which led them to the island of Jaya. He and Noland met and eventually befriended the Shandian tribe, becoming particularly close with the warrior Kalgara, who showed Noland the City of Gold. Now, of course, complications ensued, but they were resolved, and Nolan left the island promising to return. And after Nolan returned to his kingdom in North Blue, he regaled the king with tales of his expedition and was subsequently ordered to take him to the City of Gold. However, after arriving in Jaya, Nolan discovered that the Golden City, as well as the entire Shandian tribe, had disappeared. The king, thinking that Nolan was some sort of ancient troll, then had Nolan arrested and executed and was successful in forever branding him as Liar Nolan. However, the truth of the matter, as stated before, is that part of Jaya was launched into the sky, and once settled into the clouds, the Shandian tribe was immediately attacked by the armies of Skypea, and Kalgara was slain in battle, with neither he nor Noland ever knowing the fate of one another. But back in modern day, Enel unleashed his ultimate technique that instantly destroyed Angel Island and threatens to consume the entirety of Skypea itself. Luffy, assisted by Nami, then makes his way up to the Ark for one final shot at taking Enel down, breaking his ultimate technique and then firing a fearsome punch directly at Enel, which sends him flying into the Golden Bell of Shandora, causing it to ring for the first time in 400 years and defeating Enel. And back on Jaya, Nolan's descendant Cricket hears this ringing, as well as sees the gigantic shadow cast by Luffy, and breaks down crying as his ancestors' words were finally confirmed to be true. In the aftermath of the battle, Garnfall reassumes his position as the god of Skypea and begins working with the Shandian tribe to make Skypea a place in which they can all live in peace. Prior to leaving the island, Robin discovers a poneglyph which reveals the location of another of the ancient weapons, this time being Poseidon. However, much to her surprise, another message is inscribed in the ancient language from none other than the former pirate king, Gold D. Roger. And after reading this, Robin comes to the conclusion that the true history of the world will be found on Raftel, the location in which Luffy must reach to become the next pirate king. The crew then depart Skypea with a whole ton of gold acquired and take an octopus balloon back down to the Blue Sea in order to embark on their next adventure. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we're going to be stepping into a rather dark chapter in One Piece history as the Straw Hats face their greatest challenge yet, both within and outside of the crew, as we explore the turmoil of the Water 7 Saga. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Sky Island Saga. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. So when we meet Cricket for the first time, he's pretty damn annoyed at his ancestor Noland for having forced him to live a rather undignified life because of his so-called lies. Although personally, I'd be more annoyed at genetics for being forced to live with a giant chestnut on my head. But uh, maybe that's just me.